you beast beep burp burp de burp I'm like that's not a word they're like wait skin just put it on your face what am I supposed to do with you what is up you guys welcome back today we are filming for the first time in completely natural light I watch a lot of smaller creators and I find that I actually appreciate natural light now more than the very produced studio lighting even if it looks a little less professional or less polished so you guys just let me know also in the audio visual category I got a microphone this is my first time using this microphone it was recommended to me by Leanne hopefully I am operating it properly the little green light is on so we should be recording audio right now otherwise this will never see the light of day so today guys we are going to be playing with and wear testing a bunch of clean natural makeup from Target. This was very requested from you guys and I do know that a lot of you are very patient with me about how I do tend to go kind of in the WTF direction. I like to try really high-end products but there's also just as much value in people really wanting to go clean routine 2019 and not wanting to spend Westman Atelier dollars. So the Target that is in my neighborhood had a very strange selection of things. I'm going to do a full video on Honest Beauty because I feel like it's its own thing and I want to give you guys a really good brand review on that so let me know down below honest beauty products that you either really love or that you really want to see reviewed and I will make sure that those are in an upcoming video but today we are going to be playing with it I'm just I'm gonna go one item at a time I'm not gonna give you a rundown because there are a lot let's go ahead and jump in guys we're going to put all of this on my face we're going to talk through it this is not a first impressions I have played with these before but I have not wear tested them yet so let's go ahead and jump in. So the first item I'm going to be putting on my face today, I've already put my SPF on a while ago. This is the Zuzu Luxe Oil-Free Liquid Foundation. And if you have been in the Target natural makeup aisle, I'm sure you've been curious about this. One thing that I did notice about the Target Clean Beauty Natural Beauty aisle is that these things are not necessarily what you would think of as drugstore price. They're more in the physician's formula category where things are kind of over $20 in a lot of cases, but even though that was a little sticker shocking to me at the time, it managed to get out of there for probably under $150 for like a whole face of makeup. So I just have to kind of put that in perspective compared to what I typically pay for any beauty product. So I've got this on the back of my hand here. I'm just applying it with a sponge. And you guys, recently I've been testing Vapor Beauty, both of the foundations from Vapor. And as soon as I put this on the first time, I realized I had forgotten what it's like to interact with an unproblematic foundation. Oh, I know, that's, uh, that's shots fired, but I have been trying to make vapor work with a powder for a little over a week now, especially because it's two foundations. I've been wearing, you know, one and then the other, and sometimes I wash it off because I just feel like I did it wrong. And I've been having a really hard time. I am going to do a full video on both of the Vapor foundations, but right now, honestly, they're kind of disappointing me because I really don't feel like they dry down and they're not very versatile. And this has this instant, guys, instant dry down and not in a super matte way. While this is not an ideal color for me. It's the drugstore. It's not always easy to find your match. It's kind of hit and miss. Like it's going a little bit gray on me because it's a little too pink, a little too light for my skin tone. And you just kind of don't know until you put this kind of stuff on because it's really down to almost an undertones thing. I will probably go and if I really, really like this, switch it out for another color if they have a better shade for me. But I will say that first impressions and now second impressions, I really, really like this foundation. I love how quickly it dries down. I love how lightweight it is on the skin and I love how it interacts with other products. So let's go ahead and try and put something else on my face here so that we can, I don't know, try and take the ghostliness out of it a little bit. I mean, I guess that's kind of good news though for a lot of my really, really fair skinned girls out there because a lot of times the lightest shade in any range isn't light enough for you. They have a lighter than me shade, which is pretty cool. So the next thing that we're going to go in with is the Well People BioCorrect. I have reviewed this in the past, but they do carry Well People at the Target Clean Beauty section. And so I'm going to use this just under my eyes as kind of a color corrector because this is actually a case of the lightest shade not really being light enough, but it is a really, really beautiful color corrector, at least on me because it's so peach. I never used to be a believer in color correctors. And then I would see myself in my mirror of truth down in my bathroom and it looked like my concealer was see-through. <laughs> you know, you could just see straight through to kind of the dark spots and you could really see the melasma or the kind of purpleness under my eyes. I was like, oh, that's what color correctors are for. And even this right here, the Trish McAvoy 
instant eye lift is a really, really beautiful kind of peach tone, but I don't consider this to be a very clean product, even though it is cruelty free and everything, because it is so heavily fragranced, but it's still a very, very beautiful product. The next thing that I'm going to go in with is the Pacifica Natural Minerals Liquid Cover Full Coverage Lasting Concealer. I also have wear tested this. I like it. It's one of my more liked clean concealers because you guys do know that I haven't really found one that I love yet. I ordered a ton from Sephora, different brands, different shades, and I will be doing a full haul of everything that I bought from the Sephora VIB sale. Go ahead and get that blender then. And you guys, like I said, I completely forgot what it's like to interact with makeup that doesn't make me have to try. <laughs> This doesn't make me have to try and I'm really really loving it. I was like, wait a second Have I completely forgotten how to wear a full face of makeup because I've spent so much time wearing, you know Refining my cream beauty routine. I really thought because I was trying those vapor foundations that Maybe maybe I just am not good at this anymore Maybe I forgot that I don't really like the way that a full powdered face looks on me because I actually ordered a bunch of Powder products to try like powder pigment products. I have the RMS uh, Savannah Peach collection that I'm gonna review at some point. I was putting it on and I was like, oh my god, maybe I hate a full face of makeup. Maybe I hate a powder look. It turns out it was just the vapor foundations. They just are really, really difficult to work with. So let's go ahead and powder this. I have the Pixie Flawless Finishing Powder right here, Pixie by Petra. I've never used a Pixie product before buying these. And this is what it looks like when you open it up. And even though it's a pressed powder, you guys, it definitely is, I mean, it's there. You pick up a good bit of that pigment on the brush pretty easily. And I find that even though I do prefer to tap it in first, because I don't like to kind of give anything an opportunity to move around, especially as much product that I just, as I just put underneath my eyes, I do feel like you could buff this in if you wanted to, not necessarily because of the nature of the powder, but because this foundation dries down on its own, which I really, really appreciate. I hate a no dry down foundation. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with you? The next thing that I'm gonna go in with guys, and I, I you have to forgive me because Again, this is a drugstore haul, drugstore full face, and so you don't get to open things up and stick your phalanges in them. So some of these shades are going to be mm, less than ideal. So the biggest case in point is probably this. This is also a Pixie by Petra product. This is the Natural Contour Powder. And it might just be that I am not used to using a shade like this. It is a very cool toned kind of chocolate shade. I'm just gonna very gently kind of work that on the back of my hand before I put it on my face. And we're just gonna contour a little. And my eyes are a little bit not adjusting to the light here. So if this looks crazy in post, I'm really sorry. Yeah, so I do really appreciate a contour that is cool toned. I don't think this is ideal for me but we're gonna make it work. Maybe I'm just unaccustomed to this kind of thing. Like maybe this is how people contour and I just don't know. She says that is probably in post. I look like Michael Jackson on crack. Uh, get it up there in the hairline at least, Kagi. Okay, I'm going to run down kind of the profiles on all these products uh, when we get done because I found that the Anami, yes, it's pronounced Anami. <laughs> Oh boy, the Anami video got a little bit tedious because I explained every single product as I was putting it on and I would rather just kind of save that to the end. So the next thing that I'm going to use <clears throat> is this. This is the uh, Pacifica blush in Camellia. I don't know if you're seeing how small this blush is. This is 0.1 ounces and it's $12, which makes it $120 an ounce. That's not an inexpensive blush. I, I mean, $12 is still fine. You know what I mean? It's fine but this is definitely like an eyeshadow size blush. If you're ordering it online, I just want you guys to know what you're getting yourselves into. This is very, very small. And I don't totally love that it kind of, and, and this is on the kind of, but it kind of shifts blue on the skin, just a little bit. So the really good thing about this blush is that it's actually ridiculously pigmented. I don't love that it's super shimmery. In fact, when I bought it, I thought I was getting one that was gonna be a little bit more matte, but look at the color payoff. It's so nice. It's very easy to control, very, very blendable. I have definitely worked with more expensive blushes that are more difficult to work with. This is definitely really, really creamy. It's the ideal amount of pigmentation. I will say like PYT is less expensive pound for pound 
but the shades don't have as much color payoff. You really do have to use more of them. I do, I appreciate this. I think that it's really, really pretty. And even though I wasn't expecting a shimmery blush, it's not super duper shimmery. I wasn't pointing to anything just now. I was just trying to get hair off of my face. So, I mean, it's all going on so easily probably because this foundation is so good. I really, really like the texture of this foundation. It dries down so, so beautifully. I'm gonna say that a hundred times, but there's just no substitute for something that makes putting the rest of your makeup on easier. And I don't feel like it is a super, super matte look, even though we powdered it down, it doesn't feel any worse than satin. So I'm actually going to zoom in real quick and, uh, and refocus and kind of show you guys the texture of this on the skin. In completely natural light, I am just very, very pleased. I'm very pleased at how the concealers interacted with it. I'm very pleased with how the pigment went on on top of the foundation. I'm even pleased at the shades of the of the pigments. I'm like not, it's not necessarily what I would have gone for had I had the choice, but I think a cool toned bronzer slash contour does have a place in my routine when I use it very judiciously and I do actually really like that combination of the two concealers underneath my eyes because I feel like we did actually get color cancellation and a creamy finish, which is everything that I ever want. I just don't want to dry my under eyes and make them look really crepey and old. So the next thing that I have here is the Bio Base Baked Brightener in One Universal Glow from Well People. This is a massive highlighter and I was a little reticent because it doesn't really look like a highlighter like you would think of a highlighter. But I really, really like this highlighter. Not necessarily because it's giving me like this insane glow, but because it does a really good job of actually catching the light. Boom. Like without being glittery. It actually has a tiny bit of coverage to it, which makes it act like a highlight instead of a strobe. It's actually, you know, counterbalancing a contour in the sense of the definition of the term highlight. And that actually has a place in my routine. Like this could become a very cool, valuable product in my routine because I feel like by the time I put highlighter on, especially if I put a shimmery blush on, and honestly, I've been trying a luminizing powder, would not recommend, I end up kind of looking like the wrong side of the mother of pearl. Like I just end up being really, really shimmery and I don't like it. That's not what I'm going for. And so to have something that kind of bridges the gap here, it does have a highlight effect, but I can control the glow with another product after the fact. But it does a really, really good job of actually adding a almost like a lifted appearance to my skin. Okay, so I actually got a finishing spray. We are not going to be using my Anami Radical Setting Mist today, even though it would work great. I got the Pacifica Crystal Dew Setting Spray, Rose Quartz, and Flower Extract. Y'all, this smells crazy. <laughs> I don't really like it. It smells like I'm breathing in scented baby powder. It's just like not the best, but I want to test whether it works as a setting mist, you know? I will say, this feels like a very drugstore sprayer. <laughs> this is not a luxury sprayer. There's nothing about this that says, oh, that was refreshing. It's kind of like, ah, 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 all over your face. So not, not my favorite, but you know, will cope. I didn't buy a mascara. I've tried the Pacifica mascaras. I've tried the Well People mascara. And honestly, they're all pretty disappointing to me. I find that even with a full coverage look, I can still get like a skin, skin, skin appearance if I don't do anything on my eyes except mascara and then do a nice glossy look. And then the final product today before we talk about all of the prices and claims on everything is the Starling by Noya in Tasteful Nude. You guys, I really, really like this lip gloss. It's a super high pigmented lip gloss. It is like the perfect nude. It actually reminds me, it's not a liquid lipstick, so it's not gonna dry down. It's not gonna get all like hard and crinkly. And what it really reminds me of is Stephanie by Thrive, which is like my favorite lip color. Oh, it's really, really smooth on the lips. It's not outrageously glossy. It doesn't feel like it's gonna like, I don't know, move around and stuff, but it has enough pigment punch that when you put it on, especially if you're gonna wear a nude like this, it needs to have good coverage. It needs to have good pigment distribution or else you're gonna see a really hard contrast between the kind of cool tone beige 
and your actual lip color, which is like defeating the entire purpose. So this does a really good job of actually like neutralizing and blanking out my natural lip color and giving me this really, really beautiful nude lip in one quick application. So the Zuzu Luxe Foundation is $26.99 at Target and you get one ounce and it's actually, I think uh, $32, something like that on the actual manufacturer's website. So you're getting a better deal at Target. I got it in the shade L1, which is actually the palest shade, but I could probably get away with L4 which is a slightly warmer light shade. So well, people, this is a local Austin brand. So uh, for both the Bio-Baked Based Brightener, mm -hmm. Bio-Based Baked Brightener, and the Bio-Correct, I really, really like both of these. I've been wearing this for a while. I think that this is actually like a new product to me, like a new kind of makeup item to me. This ability to have a pigment based highlight instead of like a shimmer based highlight. I'm here for it. I think it's awesome. So the BioCorrect is $25.99 and you get 0.25 ounces. They have a bunch of other products that I did actually do a wear test on their foundation. I was like not that impressed. The Narcissist Foundation, the Bio Brightener, Baked Powder. Is that what I have? Bio Base Baked Bark. It's 0.26 ounces and it's $24.99. I think that this is hella worth it. I think that this is really, really cool. So yeah, like I said, this is an Austin-based line. We do have an actual Well People store here, but now you can get it in Target and that is pretty freaking cool. So the natural contour powder from Pixi was $20. The powder was also $20. And for each of these, you get 0.42 ounce. Oh, sorry, you get 0.42 ounces in the powder and then you get 0.28 ounces in the the contour. That seems a little strange, doesn't it? They're the same price, they're the same package, but you get less bronzer. I don't know. Explain that to me. They also have a concealing base. They have a huge line of pixie stuff. Like I could have gone pixie crazy all on its own, but I was just like, I really want to diversify, try a bunch of brands on my face here. So the brand on this is Noya, N-O-Y-A-H. You get 0.1 fluid ounces for $9.99 on this. So it is very drugstore priced. Comes in a crap ton of shades. It comes in, what would that be? 12 shades. I got it, like I said, in the shade Tasteful Nude, which I think is fantastic. I do think that this is like an ideal nude shade. In fact, I want to pull out Stephanie here, my absolute favorite shade of lipstick of all time. And we will compare. Let's see if we have a dupe here. No, no, no. They are actually very different. Stephanie, I can't believe how pink it makes Stephanie look. That's crazy. So this is definitely like ultimate neutral, almost to the point of uh, slightly golden. So as far as the Pacifica setting spray, you get two ounces for $10, not the worst. This, you get five ounces for $30, so that's $6 an ounce. This is $5 an ounce, so not bad. And I mean, we'll see how it kind of, you know, helps things wear over the day, but it did set my makeup nicely. And I think that it looks really pretty. I am like really pumped about this makeup look, actually. I feel really, really pretty. I'm looking at myself in my mirror. I'm looking at myself in my monitor. I like the way that this looks. And when I put it on the first time, I made sure to go downstairs into my bathroom mirror of truth and check and see if we had actually gotten the opacity that it looks like that I'm getting, especially underneath my eyes or to see if the powder was like smearing things around and I just couldn't see it in this lighting. And you guys, this looks pretty stinking good. <laughs> I would say that this is a face of makeup, especially for the price, that honestly kind of blows away a lot of the foundations that I've been interacting with lately at much higher prices. And that's not to say that they're necessarily going for the same things, because of course everyone has different expectations, what they want from a foundation, how it's going to interact with their skin. But for me being a dry skin girl who still wants a little bit of dewiness, even if I have full coverage, this is doing it. So I do think I'm going to go to Target and switch out this foundation, but we're going to wear test this for the rest of my day. I will check in with you guys and tell you how everything wore. We'll do a couple more close-ups and everything, and I will be able to give you guys kind of my final thoughts on these. But honestly, second impressions, I really like these products, and I think that Target did an amazing job of curating them. So. Yeah, I'll see you guys at the end of my day. Okay guys, it is the end of my day. I have been wearing this makeup now for eight hours, pretty much on the nose, and I'm here to share some final thoughts with you guys on all of these products. So let's talk about this foundation first. So I did go and get the other shade, 
And when I tested them, it turns out that I am kind of between shades. I am between L1 and L4. If there's like an L2 or an L3, maybe that would be the best, but I'll show you guys real quick. God, when you open it, guys, if you store it upright, it just spews product and it's very annoying. You guys, this is a very, very similar situation to the Aire Perez where this next shade is so, so golden. And then this is very, very like neutrally pink, almost gray on my skin. But when you mix them together, you get pretty much my ideal shade. So if you are complected like me. There's a good chance you're between shades in this line. Look at that, just disappears. It's like the perfect shade on my skin. So let's talk about the performance of this actual foundation. So like I said, it's been about eight hours and I went shopping with my friend Cami. We went all around, it got up to 91 degrees today. I've just kind of been in and out of different temperatures and things like that. And the foundation did okay. <laughs> it did okay. You can see, and I'll show you up close in a second, but you can see we lost some pigmentation around here. It got a little skippy. It's off my nose a little bit. And the biggest thing that I experience with any foundation when I wear a powder on top of it or when I wear something that has a satin finish to it is just that it's gonna break up around my mouth and it's gonna break up underneath my eyes. It's just how it is. And it's because my under eyes are super dry and for some reason so is around like my mustache area. And then around here just gets kind of oily combo-ish and it just tends to start to break apart like Pangea. I would give performance wise of this foundation like a seven out of 10 just because it does show a texture difference between my skin and the foundation. And it's also not particularly long wearing, but I also understand that it got really hot outside today and it did a pretty good job. Let's zoom in and I will kind of show you the nuances here. There aren't any real surprises here. I'm always eager to have something kind of knock my socks off. This did not knock my socks off, but it behaved about as well as I expected it to. So this is what I'm talking about underneath my eyes and I don't necessarily blame the foundation for this. I, it's pretty much anywhere where I put multiple products on or multiple layers of product in order to build more coverage. And then I set it with powder. It just over dries, especially underneath my eyes, but you can also see it kind of around my mouth right here. And then this, like I said, you know, it's kind of patchy right here. It's kind of breaking up a little bit. And I don't think it's necessarily a challenge for a foundation to stay normal on your cheeks. Your cheeks are a pretty unoffensive part of your face. There's not a lot of topography. There's not a lot of movement necessarily. And you know, from trying on clothes and things like that, I guess I probably brushed my face a little bit and we lost a little bit of bronze or maybe just touching my hair or whatever. And so, like I said, not bulletproof, not a long wearing foundation, still beautiful. You know, it's still beautiful. The actual color that is there stayed really true. And I feel like the combination of everything with the setting spray also kind of exceeded my expectations in terms of just the finish. Everything is just so pretty and poreless and just smooth looking. And I really, really like that. But you know, it's gone on the end of my nose. It's broken up around here. It's broken up around here. And my under eyes, while not ideal, my judgment threshold for a concealer being tolerable underneath my eyes is so low. <laughs> if it's a five out of 10, I'm just pumped because everything just ends up looking like this by the end of the day on me. But this didn't go completely transparent, which is great because that's what they typically do to me. They just end up being gone <laughs> by the end of the day for some reason. And I think it had to do with using two, using the color corrector and the concealer, but the powder really held its ground too. For the rest of the face, I think that the blush is gorgeous. I cannot really say enough about that formula. It is so easy to apply. I've definitely encountered some stubborn blushes. Yes, it shifts a tiny, tiny bit blue, but I was looking in the mirror a lot today because I was trying on clothes a lot in a lot of different lighting situations and that didn't bother me at all whatsoever. I think it also had to do with the fact that I didn't have other shiny shimmery things on my face. The contour was not shimmery. The highlight isn't particularly shimmery. We'll talk about that in a second. And the powder is really, really nice. It doesn't have any kind of iridescence to it either. I feel like we really balanced out the textures here. And a lot of these were done in really good taste. Like in the creation of these products, I feel like they're in very good taste. A lot of times when you go to the drugstore, I would say that taste is a, is a 
difficult thing to kind of account for there sometimes. You know, you do, you see things that are just there to kind of catch your eye. It's like clickbait makeup. I feel like all of this was done with like a very discerning eye for like what someone would actually want to wear. I think that goes a long way with me. So yes, I love the blush. I actually really like the contour. I know it kind of freaked me out when I first put it on, A, because I already had like kind of a grayscale foundation going on. I think that the contrast was like accentuated by that. But also once I got the rest of my makeup on, I feel like it looks totally normal. Maybe I just needed to get a little bit more confident about wearing contour. I guess I just don't really ever contour with something that's like a cool tone contour like you're supposed to. And I actually really think it's beautiful. Like I said, the powder, beautiful, blurring, worked really, really well with the setting spray. My only real objection to the setting spray is the smell. It's a freaking bizarre smell. I can kind of like taste it when I spray it on my face, but for 10 bucks, I'm going to keep using it. I can always use a setting spray, especially one that's like actually functional. Honestly, guys, the two big winners of the day are the lip gloss, which I put a little bit more of on more on of a second ago and I I love it. It's the perfect neutral shade. It really brings together a look like this. And I like this because it bridges the gap between a a matte liquid lip which I will not wear. <laughs> and something that is like really goopy, you know, a really, really highly saturated, very like high, high gloss, heavy gloss on your lips. This meets somewhere in the middle. It's very wearable. It is not heavy on the lips at all. It's super pigmented and you can put it on so easily. I would be very interested to try this in other shades because it was very, very easy to wear. And then finally, honestly guys, this is the winner of the day. She's not cheap. None of this stuff is particularly cheap. This well people, I realize guys, this is not a highlighter. They call it a brightener and that is exactly what it is. Now, granted, I'm not an idiot for thinking that, all of these brands call things different things. They're just like, it's an aluminizer. I'm like, that's not a word. They're like, wait, just put it on your face. But really this is a completely different makeup item. It's just a different category of makeup. And I love it. I love having a brighter powder that has just a touch, touch, touch. And I realized that my swatch sucked earlier. I really rubbed my finger in that. It is a white powder that shifts just ever so, ever so slightly like shimmery pink and it just reflects the light. It really puts highlight on your face instead of a shimmery strobe. I think that these are all such beautiful products. I have definitely, on me, used an entire face of makeup that cost so much more than this and been so disappointed. And so, I mean, this being my like second impression kind of thing, I do feel like I got the hang of the products before I showed them to you, but I feel like I could keep working with them and get the hang of them even more. And I would pretty much recommend anything that's on my face <laughs> with the caveats that I provided, just that, you know, this is not a bulletproof foundation. I know that a lot of you guys had really been wanting me to try some of these products. If I did not try a product that you really, really wanted to know more about, let me know. I have a lot of faith right now in Target's ability to curate this collection. I think that it's very, very cool. And sometimes it's very, very intimidating to walk into a drugstore aisle where everything's over $20 and even know where to begin, you know? So if I can help you guys navigate that, that is what I'm here for. And that makes me really happy to be able to do that for you guys. So. If you did enjoy this in all of my long winded goodness, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. And if it is your first time here and this was fun for you, consider subscribing while you're here. Hit the button down below. We would love to have you. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much. I hope you're having an awesome day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.